Coming up today, human immune cells engineered to fight cancer. See what it meant for one survivor and the recent change giving patients earlier access. Good morning, I'm Jessica Lovell and welcome to the Morning Medical Update. There's a new approach to fighting cancer and it's giving new hope to providers and patients. We are talking about immunotherapy and specifically today, we are focused on CAR T cell therapy. It tweaks your body's own immune cells to help them kill cancer cells. Up until recently, it was really a last ditch effort for patients, but today we're gonna learn why doctors are thrilled to get it to patients earlier in the treatment process. We'll also meet someone who endured the standard treatments, but when cancer came back, she turned to CAR T cell therapy. But first, this morning, let's get to our morning rounds. So if you see orange lights or orange fountains or even my orange outfit today, it is all to acknowledge National Gun Violence Awareness Day. More and more physicians and healthcare leaders are treating gun violence as a disease. Guns kill upwards of 120 Americans every single day. In 2022, CDC data showed more than 48,000 people died in homicides, suicides, and accidental shootings. Guns recently passed motor vehicle crashes as the leading cause of death for children ages 1 through 17. And trauma surgeon here at the health system, Dr. Robert Winfield, says it's important to remember the tens of thousands of other who get shot and live to tell about it. Some people have fairly minor physical limitations as a result. Um, if you get uh, kind of shot through the skin or musculature of a leg, for example, somebody might tolerate that reasonably well from a physical perspective. Um, in terms of uh, the, um, the more severe injuries, patients who have gunshots to the head, patients who have gunshots to the torso, um, potentially causing injuries to multiple bodily systems, uh, that can obviously um, lead to a long recovery. Either way, the emotional impact on the patient for having sustained an injury in, in that fashion, uh, being violently injured by another human, um, the, there's, a, there's a lot of scar that develops as a result of that. Again, that was Robert Winfield, Dr. Robert Winfield, speaking to us from his hotel room in Washington, D.C., where he joined a White House summit on addressing gun violence as a public health issue. We are looking forward to hearing what was discussed on a future episode. Today, though, we are talking with two expert hematologists and oncologists, Dr. Joseph McGurk and also Dr. Layla Shun. They both work at the University of Kansas Cancer Center's Division of Hematologic Malignancies and Cellular Therapeutics, where Dr. McGurk right here is the director. Good to have you both with us today. We are also so happy to be hearing from Shea Franklin, who has gotten to know these doctors while being treated for multiple myeloma for more than a decade. Um, she received a CAR T cell infusion back in January of 2023. Shea says that she is currently living her best life. That is what we like to hear. Um, but to put it you know, lightly, you've been through a lot since your diagnosis. That was back in 2009. How did you first find out that you had multiple myeloma? And what did you think when you heard this diagnosis? So I was, um, I had just returned to Kansas City mm -hmm. uh, in 2008, late 2008, and I had a very aggressive uh, travel schedule. So I started feeling tired. Um, day after Christmas, I was at the mall, and um, I ended up in the emergency room um, due to pain and things like that. Um, and then it come to find out my ovary had erupted and then after they took care of that, um, they referred me to uh, a nephrologist. And he asked me, do you know your kidneys are functioning at about 35%? And of course I said, no, didn't know that. And so through um, all of the, the treatment and doctor's appointments um, on, in Jan I'm sorry, yeah, February of 2009, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Um, did you even know what that was? I did not know what it was, and, and I was by myself when I got my, my diagnosis, and I was pretty much traumatized because from there they took me to a treatment room and they did my very first bone marrow biopsy. Now when I'm signing saying, yes, I'll do a bone marrow biopsy, I had no idea of the pain that I was getting ready to endure. Explain the pain. Um, so you're, you're laying flat on your back and they aspirate bone marrow 
and they cannot um, numb your bones. So there was a wonderful, I don't know her name, but uh, she was a student or resident, um, and she was holding my hand and telling me to breathe. And, and that's what I remember. I, I was traumatized. And uh, from there, uh, St. Luke's referred me to KU. Wow, traumatized. Is that a word, Dr. Shune, that you hear when someone is whisked away to have a, to have a bone marrow biopsy? You know, the, to hear you have cancer is shocking. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's prepared to hear this. And then, because it's cancer, the management is rapid. So people are on the move to try to save your life. So rapid movements, rapid interventions, rapid procedures. You're not prepared mentally, yeah. and now you're physically going going through this. Exactly. Dr. McGurk, multiple myeloma, one of one of many blood cancer. What's what's happening in inside the body with the disease? And then she talked about a ruptured ovary and her kidneys. Did, were those two correlated? Kind of help us understand I, I, any of this. And all I of can't this. speak to the latter. And okay. I suspect not. I think okay. incidentally, in this uh, we we see this with a number of blood cancers, including multiple myeloma. Patients have one medical problem that takes them to the attention of, of physicians and nurses, uh, and a second problem, such as multiple myeloma or other blood cancers, are diagnosed. So it's a discovery. Yes, that's exactly right. And multiple myeloma is a cancer of a population of cells called plasma cells. Now, these are cells that live in the bone marrow, and their job is to make antibodies, antibodies that help us respond to a vaccination, antibodies that help protect us from infection. That's what they normally do. But when they become cancerous, things go wrong in their chromosomes, genetic abnormalities, and the cell starts dividing abnormally and uncontrollably, it produces antibodies still, but those antibodies don't do any good. They're not protecting us from anything. As a matter of fact, they're causing trouble. They can get stuck in the kidney and the tubules in the kidney and cause kidney failure. In addition, these plasma cells attack the bones and they can cause a Swiss cheese-like effect on the bones mm -hmm. and bore out holes in the bone uh, that, uh, and, and grow tumors in the bone. And you'll see in a few moments a PET scan that shows the activity uh, in the bone, so the bones are commonly affected. It is, has historically been a devastating disease. When I started out in the field 30 years ago, uh, the, the median survival for a newly diagnosed myeloma patient was two years. Yeah. Uh, and nothing we did, uh, including at a, a, a big cancer center I worked at at that time, Sloan Kettering, nothing we did made a difference in survival. It's a whole different landscape today, thanks to some of the therapies that we're going to hear about today. A lot happens in 30 years. Yes, absolutely. And this is a Thank biology le lesson that, Shay, you were certainly not prepared for, but lear learned a lot about, about your cells and what was going on. Dr. Shanae, when you treat multiple myeloma and, and then you put it into remission, there's always that worry about the relapse. So um, is that common with multiple myeloma? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. Yeah, the bulk of the patients who go into remission will eventually relapse and we require more treatment and then relapse again and require more treatment. There's a small fraction that is cured, less than 10%, but the bulk of myeloma patients with our current therapies will relapse. However, in the future, we're looking to cure myeloma. Yes, we want to we want to have a show about that. <laughs> we'll get you on, we're going to get you back on for that. But is that a conversation you would have with a patient like Shay? Is to say, look, we're we're going to take you so far, but there is that chance absolutely, that this is coming back. And I'm completely honest. I tell my patients, this is a marathon, milestone. This is yeah. a marathon. We're going to run a marathon, a long race. It's going to come back. Don't panic. I'll get you new treatment. We'll get you back in remission. My goal is for you to live a good life, a normal life. So even though it comes back, we have great tools. Yeah. Yeah. Shay said she's living her best life. Yeah. Are you feel, why do you say that? Um, because I deal with multi myeloma, but multi myeloma has to deal with me. So, <laughs> so that's the bigger, that, that yeah. multi myeloma has the challenge, yes. dealing with you. I like yes. that. <laughs> and so that's why I, and she mentioned, Dr. Shanae mentioned um, uh, marathons. Mm -hmm. That's. I mean, I joined a group to learn how to run a half marathon, and they were living their lives. Some of them were coming from their uh, chemotherapy treatment and training. Had so, you ran a marathon before that? No, I um, I was at an event, night the uh, light the night, and um, there was this nice little lady that said, "Come into my tent. I have some information for you." And, and the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> you, my fifth one. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome.
So let's go back though. Before you were running marathons, you had to go through, and before actually CAR T cell therapy, you went through several different treatments mm -hmm. over the years. Let's talk about those. Um, and you had a stem cell transplant. That was in 2009. We heard other survivors talk about how tough yeah. a stem cell uh, bone marrow transplant can be, especially when you're dealing with graft versus host disease, which I know you've, you've talked about that a lot, Dr. McGurk. Yeah. So explain to us, help us understand what you had to deal with when you were going through some of those first rounds of treatment. Um, my, my very first treatment, um, it, my kidneys were failing on, on that treatment. So my miracle drug was Valcade. Um, and my, I came off of uh, dialysis, which was, I understand, is very rare. Um, and then I started, um, they got me prepared for uh, my first stem cell, which was 2009, and it was grueling, and, and that's an understatement. And it took my entire family, I have a large family, um, and we had a schedule, we had calendars, they had to get me to all of the treatments, and then once I had the, um, I got the the chemotherapy, Malfalin. Yes. 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 That that's a killer. Um, I I say I would I look like and I felt like a burnt chicken. It, it, it burnt everything, the bottom of my feet, my hands, um, and Ellen Maxwell told me she said you're going to feel worse than you've ever thought, but I promise you we're going to bring you back, and they did. But and those were the darkest days, those moments, yeah, that pain. Yeah, just, just pain. I, I mean, pain from head to toe mm. um, and nausea. But I had a wonderful support team. And then in 2011, Dr. McGurk called me into his office and told me I had to do it again. <laughs> so I want to talk about that. So this was the second transplant, mm -hmm. a, a relapse. This, this was ag aggressive chemo. Is that what you had to, to go through Is that all, as, as well? Well. Uh, it was explained to me early on um, that we we used to have conversations, as Dr. McGurk said, about you know how many years can we get, how much time can we get. I'm no longer having those conversations, but I had to have the, they had to have those tough conversations with me, um, and so my first my first diagnosis when I I mean I first went through the stem cell, we're going we're, we're trying to get you three years, and then the second one we can get you another two years and there's treatment and developments that uh, we want you we want to keep you here so we can try those others so it's, it's been a, it's been a journey how were you handling that mentally what was the mental health journey for you when you're talking in terms of two years three years maybe an extra additional year uh, it's, it's tough it's tough and um, you have to figure out um, a new way to, you know, and, and, and a new way to, to live your life um, because, again, it has to be incorporated into your life because you, you don't stop working. Most people don't stop working. You know, I don't have any kids, but they have to take care of their families. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I have a therapist. Um, I've had several therapists good you know uh, because they help you in different ways um, so yeah I, I learned how to process things um, and put them in their place so that I can go on with my life the impact is felt by all your support team oh, your yeah. family friends everyone around you yeah. um, tell us a little bit more about them and how how important they were through all of this oh, they were um, <laughs> phenomenal phenomenal um, my younger sister can I say her name? Yeah. Michelle, she hates for me to, to tell people that. But um, she had been laid off, right? The, um, a couple of days before we put, we, we knew I was, I was diagnosed, but before my intense treatment started, and she and her husband had a, a conversation and she was not going to uh, seek employment, she was going to take care of me. She said, wow. God told her to come and take care of her sister. That was her job? Yes. And when I tell you she provided care with compassion mm -hmm. and she wouldn't let me feel sorry for myself. She danced around and played music and and I would make a mess, you know, because I I couldn't do anything for myself. And 
One day she was trying to give me a shower and I just didn't feel like it. And I, I say in my mind, I ran back to the bed that she had just made and I did, really didn't run. And she caught me and had to give me another shower because you have to stay clean. Um, and I got a disease called mucositis um, and that landed me back in the hospital. Um, and she was just right there every step of the way. And, and my entire family, my brother, his job was to drive me back and forth to um, dialysis um, and the numerous doctor's appointments. It was... It takes everyone. It, it really does. Dr. It Berger, really when, does. when she mentioned like her sister dancing around and making her feel happy, I mean, you kind of nodded as if to say, those are the things you need. When you send Absolutely. patients home, you need to know that there's people on the other end to kind of catch catch those patients and, and dance around for them. That's yeah. exactly right. And we try to be lighthearted in clinic and be silly uh, uh, quite a bit uh, for, for the same reason. People are living, they're, they're alive, and God only knows what the future is for any of us. The statistics may tell us one thing, but uh, patients all, often will uh, not pay attention to those odds and do beautifully for uh, years on. It is an extraordinarily promising time. So we are very upbeat and uh, every bit as determined as our patients and their families. I love that. So after all these treatments failed that Shay was telling us about, she then became eligible for CAR T cell therapy. We've spoken about this a lot, but you nobody explains it better than you, Dr. McGurk. Explain, break it down for us exactly what CAR T cell therapy is and what it's doing. Absolutely, as we've understood, cancer better and better over the years on the shoulders of men and women in laboratories throughout the world uh, and uh, why these cancers develop because you have cells in your immune system, they're called T cells, and part of their job is to watch out for abnormally behaving cells attack and destroy them before they can become cancerous. Uh, and uh, in patients who develop cancer, the T cells have let us down and part of that is because the cancer cells have figured out how to make themselves stealth and hide out from the immune system. And so with CAR T cell therapy, with that understanding, that new understanding of how the immune system works and what goes wrong when we develop cancers to the immune system, we can take those immune cells out of the blood. So we collect blood from a patient, uh, we take those, uh, that blood to the lab, we isolate these T cells, and then we genetically rewire them to recognize the cancer cells again. We expand them into a billion cells, Several weeks later, we send them back to the clinic. We infuse them into the patient like a blood transfusion. They sweep around the body. They bind to the cancer cells, punch a hole in the cancer cells, and release little Pac-Man called granzymes that go through and tear up the chromosomes and DNA in the cancer cell and kill the cancer cell. And it has been a game changer. Stunning results. You make it sound so easy. But I love it when you say the Pac-Man. Yes. That's yeah. something I understand. The Pac-Man go and, right. and eat and, and tear it up. Um, so what changed from this being the last ditch effort to now being, you know, possibly closer to a first line of defense for, for patients like Absolutely, Shay. critically important question. So like so many cancer therapies, the Food and Drug Administration wants us to demonstrate that in the worst case scenario, patients who have failed all other mm -hmm. prior lines of therapy, that this is a safe therapy first and foremost and that not only is it safe, but there's some effectiveness. Once that's demonstrated, and it was demonstrated in a remarkable way, in the first study, well, with the construct uh, that we gave, that in that study, patients who had failed four lines of prior therapy, all of the standard therapies, including stem cell transplant, we saw 97.8% response rates, overall response rates, 82% complete remissions, that was unprecedented, really stunning, as I mentioned earlier. So in the, and that's in the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So that begs the question of, well, why wait? Why allow patients to get into the worst case scenario? We've demonstrated that the safety profile and how, how very effective. So now we're moving it up in earlier lines of therapy. Dr. Shanae is overseeing several clinical trials that we have in doing just that. And she has a clinical trial soon that will compare CAR T cell therapy directly to stem cell transplantation mm. and may replace stem cell transplantation, we're hopeful. In addition, we, we don't have long enough follow-up now to know that everybody's gonna relapse after these CAR T cell therapies. Mm. There may be a plateau of uh, patients that we're actually curing. We can't say that with confidence yet. We don't have enough years of follow-up, but we're hopeful that that's going to be the case. And we think that's going to increase, increasingly be likely if we move this up earlier in the therapy for patients to the front line.
Dr. Janae, you brought some images that show the effectiveness of CAR T cell therapy. So walk us through what we're seeing uh, on the left and then on the right. Right. So uh, on the left there, you see a patient uh, with, dealing with myeloma with extensive amount of bone disease that's horribly causing pain. And as soon as they receive their CAR T, you can look at this beautiful picture, you know, here on the left that is beautiful that all the bone lesions have resolved and patients are healthy and they have a high quality of life. So it really works. And then the right, we see yes. the response rate. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, just the clear bones, clear bones. Clear bones, that's what we want to see. <laughs> so let's just talk about it in the, uh, as far as it goes for patients. What does this really mean for patients uh, like Shay and beyond? What it means for people like Shay is they get to be freed from additional chemotherapy. They get to live their lives. They rarely come to the clinic. They don't need chemo. They don't need any uh, additional you know, um, uh, drugs. They get to just go back to their lives. And this is what I love for our patients, a high quality of life. And this is why you do the research that you do. Uh, let's talk about the response rate. Yeah, the response rate, as Dr. McGuack alluded, is amazing. 97% overall response rate with more than 80% complete remission. And these are people who've had multiple lines of therapy. It's like a game changer, complete game changer. So Shay, compare getting CAR T to the previous treatments. <laughs> you, you really explained it and it, you said it was a pretty bad way. Yeah, it, I don't want anybody to think that it's easy because mm -hmm. it is medical uh, treatment, but compare it to the previous um, treatments. I mean, I, I was sick, but it was like having the flu or um, on the worst day, um, nauseated, maybe, you know, a couple of days. But um, the biggest thing was my family had to force feed me the, the number of calories that I needed. So how many calories a day were you needing? I think it was, um, is it 3,000? It, yeah, it was a lot for yeah. the therapy to work. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah my And you're feeling sick, so that's the last thing you want to do is eat? Right. And so they were making me protein shakes with, you know, peanut butter and, you know, ice cream. Uh, but you don't feel like eating it. So my sister, my oldest sister, Bonnie, made me a peanut butter and banana sandwich. And she's going, come on, baby, just take a <laughs> bite. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yeah, you so, either love peanut butter and banana sandwiches or you don't, so right. yeah. So my, my friends and family, yeah. um, they traveled in from, from Texas, D.C., Chicago, um, and then my local friends, they took all the training because KU does a wonderful job of preparing you and educating everybody on what they're supposed to do. I didn't, my friend that was coming from D.C., she didn't have to come because uh, it was like we, we were watching movies and, you know, getting my calories in. It was, it was a completely different experience. And since then, I, I haven't had chemo. I haven't had chemo. I'm, I'm not spending my, my days in the clinic. And I don't, I don't need a, a village of people to get me to all of my appointments. I'm outliving my life. And I, I'm watching Dr. Shune this whole time, and she's just like beaming with pride and smiling and looking at you. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like to be sitting here together, Dr. Shune? It's yeah. a blessing. Blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing. I'm so, I'm, so, blessing. Yeah, I'm so thankful for her good health. I'm so thankful that she's in complete remission. Yeah. yeah. Complete remission. Running marathons, half marathons? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to go. With, that's a full marathon in my book. So, um, what's that like? How are you training for those? How are you prepping for those? Well, I actually, like I said, I, I got tricked into my first one. Um, that's about so what it would I, take. I have um, uh, a friend now that's become my run partner. She ran the, the garment with me, and she had never run um, a half marathon. So, um, yeah, it, it's. It's imperative, it's crucial to be part of something bigger than you, bigger than what multiple myeloma is in your life. And half marathons do that for me. And it also provides me an opportunity to raise money and awareness about multiple myeloma. And also my, my passion um, is Hope Lodge, ah. American Cancer Society. So Love it. yeah, just anything that I could do to help them because leukemia, lymphoma, 
KU and Hope Lodge, they they poured into my life, you know, and threw me a, a lifeline. So we love to yeah. hear that. So we're going to ask a few more questions, but if you have questions, uh, be sure to ask those on YouTube or Facebook. You can email the Medical News Network. The information is right there on your screen. So Dr. Shanae, the FDA recently uh, changed when patients can get those CAR-T therapies. Um, so, and Dr. McGurk talked a little bit about it, but explain again um, when those conversations would be had, where you used to wait, 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 and now it's coming to the top of the line, as we mentioned. Um, so tell us a little bit more how that works and, and where that would become an option sooner. All right. So in April, the FDA approved two CAR-T products that can be used earlier in the myeloma journey. So if somebody had a myeloma therapy, transplant, and then the myeloma came back, they'd be eligible to receive CAR-T right at the second line, oh, right great. at the second line. And now in the future, as Dr. McGuack said, we will be moving it even earlier, first line. You know? So our goal is to get patients into a deep remission, maintain that remission, and free them of all chemo and allow them to go back to their lives. Dr. McGurk, the FDA recently added a black box warning to CAR T cell therapy. In, in, mm. in rare cases, um, it can cause cancer. Is that, I mean, explain what that means and what a black box warning would mean for something like Absolutely. this. Absolutely, a black, a black box warning is in what's called the label and the package insert and it's something that we are absolutely obligated to discuss with every uh, patient and their family. And as now we've uh, uh, given CAR T cell therapy to tens of thousands of patients in the United States and beyond, uh, we are seeing in a, a very, very a rare, very small percentage of patients, patients are developing uh, T cell cancers. There are two potential causes of cancers in our population of patients. Prior chemotherapy, like that's uh, that which is used to prepare the patient for the CAR T cell therapy. Uh, and it's possible that uh, this is a genetic therapy and that the gene is placed in a sensitive, vulnerable uh, place in the chromosomes of the T cell that we're modifying in the laboratory and that it could do misbehave and cause problems. Some of the cancers, we've had two patients so far in our center who developed cancers out of the many hundreds of patients that we've received and we've looked for the gene abnormalities and we've not seen them in the two patients that we have so far. But there have been some reports of the gene abnormality uh, or the gene being in the wrong place in these T cells. And so it's something that we have to be very vigilant about and learn more about. But with new technologies, CRISPR-Cas9, two uh, female scientists, uh, an American and a French, won the Nobel Prize for their discovery of a, a gene editing a tool called CRISPR-Cas9. That's allowing us to put that gene exactly where we want it uh, and not just have it randomly inserted into the chromosomes. And we're hopeful that such strategies will help us alleviate even this very rare problem for patients receiving CAR T cell therapy. I want to get to some questions from our viewers. And the first one is from Gene. Uh, he wants to know, is multiple myeloma inherited? For the most part, no. For the most part, no. It's something that happens later, a genetic abnormality that strikes. It can happen to any of us. But it's more common in the Af African-American community. Jeremy wants to know, is CAR T cell therapy best used on certain types of cancer, or is it underway to potentially be approved for many other types of cancers? Well, uh, currently there are six indications for CAR T cell therapy, six approved uh, Food and Drug Administration uh, populations of patients, and they include uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the most common form of leukemia in children, uh, but occurs in adults as well, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and there are a number of different types of what are called B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, which are the most common form of lymphomas, multiple myeloma, uh, and a couple of uh, constructs there, uh, but being explored in other blood cancers, but also in solid tumors. And so we have studies in our institution currently underway in going after aggressive solid tumors, lung cancer, metastatic breast cancer, colon cancer, other uh, uh, prostate cancer. Uh, and there's a lot of work and barriers to be overcome there to see success. Uh, but we anticipate and fully expect we're going to see uh, success in, uh, in those uh, diseases as well. So the world is changing. And the days of nonspecific chemotherapy of the old days and hopefully stem cell transplant as we know it uh, are numbered. Uh, and that's a good thing for patients and their families. 
seeing Shay sit here is an absolute miracle. This was not possible through 90% of my career trajectory. Absolutely not possible. Median survival was two years, and we had some patients survive three, four years. Uh, we're 10 years out on this journey, and she's in complete remission, and she looks absolutely fabulous. And we, uh, we did, uh, we're determined that that will continue to be the case for many years to come. I know. We need you and Dr. Shanae to live another 100 years. Okay? I'm, I'm putting almost you, there. I'm putting you down. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, last question is from Amy. Who runs the lab where CAR T cells are produced? Is that, a, does, I mean, we talk about blood labs, but is this a very specific um, skill set of somebody who's producing and doing this process with these CAR T cell therapies? There are a couple possibilities. Uh, in our own institution, we make CAR T cell therapy and we're preparing them for patients who have not responded to CAR T cell therapy or have responded and subsequently relapsed and so we're making those CAR T cells uh, uh, one floor below where we're sitting right now mm -hmm. uh, in our research laboratories um, and our laboratory handles all the CAR T cells the Food and Drug Administration have approved by industry partners that are spread out across the nation we collect those cells uh, here from our patients uh, we label them, we make sure that they get where they need to go in a safe way and they go out to California, they go to the East Coast and they're engineered there and then sent back to us. Uh, so there are a couple of different ways of uh, manufacturing them on site or sending them out for manufacturing. Let's get our takeaways. Dr. Shanae, I want to talk with you about that. What do you want people to take away from our conversation today? My message to our myeloma community is the future is bright. The future is bright. We have great tools, great ideas. They should feel encouraged. Yep. We're on the, always on the brink of something new. Dr. McGurk, what's the big takeaway? Oh, absolutely. I can't do better than that. I, I, and I completely agree. It's an extraordinary time. We're in the middle of a revolution in cancer therapeutics. We're seeing uh, completely unprecedented responses, complete remissions, improvements in survival with a better understanding of the immune system. There are other contributors to these advances as well, but this is, uh, this is a, a, a top dog in my view yeah. right now. It's a, yeah, it's we, what do you call it? Gee whiz science? Yeah, it is gee whiz science. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. All right, Ms. Shea, thank you so much for being here today. Thank, thank you for you. sharing your story. Um, for those watching, what's the big takeaway? Um, as they've said, to live your life. I mean, I'm, I'm proof and it, it works. It's working. I, I know that I am what's being studied to, to, so they can tell other patients, okay, yeah, it worked for five years, 10 years, 20 years. But we're no longer having conversations about how, many, how much time they can get me. I'm out living my life. Yeah, you do it. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Good to see you. And thanks to all of our guests. Thanks to our viewers for being with us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Coming up Monday on the Morning Medical Update. It's hard because I did miss an awful lot of life, really. Missing out on life due to migraine. But Sarah Hendren says, not anymore. I'm Jessica Lovell on the next Morning Medical Update, the treatment that brought her relief after decades of lost time with family and friends. Her message for the millions still suffering, Monday at 8. Subscribe to our Morning Medical Update and open mics with Dr. Stites podcast. Now everywhere podcasts are available.